uh, in this video we are about to see on how to use Max CSV software for tiles, sanitary and hardware business. Uh, we'll just start with the login. So in this video we are about to cover up uh, almost uh, complete business operations related to tiles business wherein we'll create few masters, we'll uh, take purchases, we'll enter a couple of sales, we'll verify our profits, we'll check the dispatch options and uh, the miscellaneous report. So to begin with, we'll just start with masters. On the masters, we can create our customers, we can create our suppliers. Uh, other than your customer suppliers, you can create all the business accounting heads uh, in general ledgers like bank account, cash account. So we'll just quickly create one of the customers. Let's say we create a customer name uh, So you can categorize your customers like uh, premium clients, corporates, hospitals, uh, resorts, hotels kind of subgrouping and based on this subgroup you can again uh, verify your profit reports, you can verify your turnover reports, sales reports likewise and each of this client can have n number of billing and shipping addresses so if you have uh, uh, 10 different site addresses you can add those in the shipping address and you can have a primary billing address. So nothing is mandatory as such in the masters uh, other than the state which is for mandatory for GST and you can search the customer by their name or you can even search them by a code. You want a system generated code also uh, even that can be done when the system will auto generate a unique code for each of the customer. You can even search the customer by their mobile number and uh, apart from this you can manage multiple information like uh, key contact details there. You can have a number of contact person there who is a purchase manager, sales manager or the owner, decision makers, their details. You can have their GST number and the taxation details in this tab. You can have def who has referred to the customer, date of incorporation, default credit days for the customer, credit limit for the customer. So based on this you can get auto alerts if the credit days or the limits are crossed. You can even block the billing if you want, those configurations are available. Who is the sales person in charge for this client? It can be an internal sales person or it can even be some architect or interior or the carpenter who is getting you the client and you can even define customer wise sales percentage incentives. Um, you can even manage the bank details for the client and in the settings you have uh, if you want to stop the transaction you can even stop. So for now I'll just, we'll just quickly save this customer. Okay, stay this Tamil Nadu and we'll just save this. Similarly, we will create a, one of your supplier. Let's say we create a supplier name Kajaria India Private Limited. And we'll quickly say this. Let's say we are buying from Kajar. Similarly, we can create different vendors. Uh, if you have all the customers, vendors, and the product list in an Excel uh, data, then we can quickly import all the data from Excel using our data import module which is available in the file menu. The file menu usually consists of all the configurations which is usually taken care by, by our team. So we will just continue with the masters now. Under general ledger you can create your cash account, bank accounts, let's say we have a HDFC bank account. So we can just have, we just have to categorize uh, into bank accounts. So all the accounting heads other than your sundry data and creators are available in the general ledger menu. So you can just categorize another bank account and save this. We, likewise, you can even create like office expenses. Um, this will fall into expenses indirect. Uh, similarly, your capital accounts or partner capital account, loans, advances, assets, liabilities, or if you're trying, uh, if you're billing anything to your client like delivery charges and the bill, then even those can be uh, added here. So you can create all the other accounting heads here. Uh, then we can even define, uh, create our salesperson uh, separately in the salesperson menu. And we can even group them separately like architects, interiors, carpenters or how is required. And based on those uh, we can even generate salesperson reports, incentive reports can be generated. So we can create a couple of salesperson here. Let's say I just create SP1. 
I'll just save this and SP2. Uh, then we'll come to the product master. So we can have uh, different products created. So we already have a set of products created for this demo in this list. So we have a product uh, in hardware. We have a product for floor tiles, wall tiles, and a sanitary. So let's say we uh, see hardware is pretty simple. Wherein uh, I've just mentioned the details here, the product code, the auto tracking set is something which is. Uh, which will internally keep a track of uh, this purchases on a lot wise or a batch wise basis automated batch numbers and the barcode stickers will get generated from the software if you want so you categorize them under the hardware group handles and the brand so you can always track all your sales report and the stock report based on group wise so total hardware stock that you have in hand or total sales made in handles group or stock and sales of jaguar can be generated on a particular date range basis and we have defined the HSN code here and the GST class we have defined the unit name that is here default landing cost purchase rate and the sales rate are defined here this can even alter with every purchase so we just mentioned the average uh, standard rate here you can even manage your uh, reorder levels uh, based on the masters so here you'll have to define the minimum quantity for each of the product let's say we can manage minimum quantity of uh, any point of time we should have some 10 numbers of this or the 20 numbers of this maximum it should not cross 50 so you get an alert when it comes below 20 you get an alert when the stock crosses 50 pieces for overstocking so you can avoid overstocking whenever it comes below 20 you need to order 20 again and once you place the order it takes let's say five days for the goods to arrive to your store you can create a default preferred vendor for this product so by default a vendor can be uh, linked at the product level itself let's say we can create another vendor saying Jaguar We can create this vendor here or link the vendor in the preferred vendor master in the masters. So once this is uh, saved, uh, and whenever you raise APO, this will be the Jaguar Industries will be the name that will be linked for this product as a default vendor for raising the PO. And you can even change this while the PO is being generated. You can have an option of minimum markup and maximum markup here. So while the purchase of Jaguar products in case if it's an MRP based product then we have a separate setting and in case if we are uh, defining our own markups on this in that case we can just mention that say, we need a minimum markup of 25% on the landing cost so it will automatically add 25% on the landing cost you can save this so likewise we have a Kajaria tiles product now a Kajaria floor tiles so we have uh, grouped them under the floor brand name is Kajaria floor tiles is a category that we mentioned and here we have mentioned the parent unit as box and we have not defined any minimum markup so this can be defined while the purchase entry if not defined here and uh, we have defined the box rate of 150 selling rate of 218 under multiple unit section now we have defined a couple of more things like one box is equal to eight pieces so we get eight pieces inside a box so the system auto calculates the eight piece wise rate Similarly, we have defined a square feet conversion also. So one box has 12 square feet and we have defined the system calculates the per square feet rate automatically. Same with square meter also. So one box has around 1.114 square meters and per square meter rate is being auto calculated here. So likewise, you can even manage inventory across multiple warehouses if required and uh, while purchase, you can segregate uh, which warehouse it is being uh, uh, transfer to initially and you can even have a warehouse a transfer voucher in between to transfer the goods from one warehouse to other warehouse also anyways uh, then we'll see another uh, product that we have created rack 12 by 12 wall tiles so again we have mentioned the group category brand with a short code for the product we have not defined any minimum markups so this can be defined while purchase we have defined the unit parent unit, unit as box HSN code and GST class has been defined and here also we have defined 
one box is equal to eight pieces and one piece is equal to one square feet so we mentioned eight square feet and we even mentioned a calculation for square meters so eight square feet is equal to 0 0.743 square meters so basically one box is coming around 0 0.743 square meters and then we have created a sanitary product Toto Indian Latin Ivory and here we just mentioned in pieces and standard rate there's no multiple units defined for this product so this way we can create all the masters uh, once or you can even import all the product list from your any existing software or from from my excel template uh, to max with the additional details <coughs> after this we'll uh, just uh, look into the other master options so we can even create different price lists uh, let's say if you want to just create different prices for premium clients so once we come to price list uh, we can just have uh, let's say price is saying premium and it can be applicable for all products in the give all product so once you select all products it is showing you single product with bo unit wise box pieces square feet and meter you can define your own selling rate uh, for this in as per this price list the new selling rate you can even do a bulk update of, or you can filter the product groups and then define the sales rate for this premium price list. In case, uh, let's say, Kajar tiles for premium prices, you want 250 year per piece rate, let's say it's around 32, say 20 and 200. So you can just change the rates as for the prices and save this. So while billing, you'll get this pricing option. You can even link this price list in the customer master, wherein if you just select any of the client, uh, you, and the other details, you can just select or link the price list for the customer. So where we have just created a swastik ceramics, if you edit, you can just link this price list so that whenever the billing happens for this client, by default, this price list related rates will get applicable for a specific client. So likewise, you can have multiple price lists of free premium clients, dealers, uh, corporates, likewise. And as for that pricing, you can link to the uh, respective customers. And once the billing is done, the price list the rates will get applicable on the billing. Uh, then we have an option of cost centers also. Uh, under cost centers, we have just created like multiple branches being operated from a single place. So we just created showroom one and showroom two. So this will be useful for us like uh, when we have two display showrooms uh, with a centralized warehouse. So showroom wise we can track orders, we can track expenses, we can track sales and profits and we can generate a cost center wise uh, mini p &L report in order to determine the performance of each of the showroom. Okay, so we are done with the masters here. Uh, then we'll just start with a purchase. So we have options right from generating sales quotation or a purchase quotation. Uh, we have option for orders, chalan. So each of this menu has the first half of the part of the menu is all about uh, transaction or entries, and the second half is all about reports. Same is the case with purchase, accounts, and inventory. So you have not dealt with anything with the opening balances here as of now. So if you want any opening balances to be added, you can go to the accounts opening balance menu and uh, enter bill wise opening balances for different vendors we can even import this uh, from any existing software once provided in excel format same is the case with inventory where we can even mention the opening stock here and these are the set of stock reports available here so we'll quickly jump into purchase so in the purchase menu we can have a raise a purchase order or directly enter a goods or zip node or convert an order to a goods or zip node and from goods to zip node we can convert to a purchase we can always track our pending purchase orders as well as pending purchase challenge the, which are not yet converted to invoice. So in this case, uh, with the demo, we'll just start with a quick purchase. Let's say we mention the supply invoice number 1 to 3, the date of entry, the actual invoice date, whether it's a cash purchase or a credit purchase. We are mentioning the supplier bill amount at the beginning itself, so let's say 1 lakh rupee. And then we are selecting the vendor name saying Kacharya India Private Limited. Uh, so his GST number, mobile and email are missing. 
And once we select the vendor name, we get a last 12 months performance graph at the bottom of the screen. So let's say we're buying Kajaria tiles. So once we select the tiles, it is asking us what how much what are you buying? What unit are you buying in? So let's say we're buying 10 boxes. So it automatically calculates how many pieces, uh, total square feet and total square meters. Let's save this. So we're buying in 10 boxes and once you select to once you come to the unit uh, rate part, it will show you the previous supplied rate history of Kajaria tiles from this particular vendor. So vendor wise previous supply rate history will be in track and by default automatically the last supply rate will be uh, fetched while you do the transaction. So in case if we have purchased at 140 you can just change it to 140 here and then we have a costing option. So our selling rate as per the masters is 218 rupees. You can even change this uh, to 225 or 230 or 250. So for this particular lot uh, the selling rate will be 250 and we have a 78 percent markup on this if there are any additional costs here you can just mention additional cost and that will get auto calculated on the individual products so we can either have an individual product wise additional expenses or an overall uh, bill wise additional expenses which will auto get segregated into respective products as per their value so it's a Kajari tiles and then we take a second product saying It's a rack, the 20 boxes. We'll save this, and once we save, we can even add additional expenses which are mentioned uh, defined by the vendor. As for the vendor invoice, if there are any additional delivery charges or something, we can just mention those 500 rupees expenses, which are there as a part of the bill. Other than this, if we have uh, generated any out-of-pocket expenses, like uh, unloading charges or loading charges or anything, so those can be added here as a part of expense. Let's say we have just uh, had our own out-of-pocket expenses for transport. Let's say 1000 rupees. <coughs> so this particular expenses will not have any impact on accounts it will just have an impact on our landing cost so 1500 rupees will get auto segregated among all these products and is asking her whether we want to recalculate the sales rate so we just give no so if you see the supplier invoice amount stands as such 69.98 and the supply rates are as such but our landing cost has increased for each of the product and since we have not recalculated the sales rate, our markup has got reduced. So our landing cost for this product, 1500 has been segregated for individual product wise as per their amount ratio and then divided into individual product wise quantity, each piece. And then if you have any other additional details like uh, LR number, LR details of the transport information or the PO number, default trade days, divine, yeah, you can even define all those. And uh, any remarks against the bill can also be saved. And then you can just save this voucher. So once you save it, it says uh, the say uh, difference in the supplier bill amount and our grand total. So even if there is any GST mismatch or even a single quantity has not been entered or some rate has been mistakenly entered or you missed out any on the on any of the product in the purchase. So with this invoice amount, you'll always be able to validate this and that will always be an accuracy, 100% accuracy while the purchase entry. So once we have saved this, the system has auto generated uh, different barcode numbers, uh, the batch numbers like MT001, 002 and 003. So for this product, we have uh, three different lots now. So next time when we buy Kajare tiles again or any of this product again, that will have a separate batch number coming in. The product code remains common as per the master. The internal system defined batch numbers will keep generating unique batch numbers with every purchase that comes in. You can even attach images along with each of the product and this image will be shown while you do the sales entry as well as we can even generate a image based stock report also you can generate barcode stickers uh, with this batch numbers or with the information of the product uh, after the purchase is made and you can even uh, put those stickers on the product as well as use them while billing
Let's say we take another purchase. Uh, Jaguar Industries and we'll take Jaguar as its handles, let's say 100 pieces. Let's say 90 rupees each and 150 is the selling rate and we just save this. So it says uh, 10,000 and let's say we put an 80 rupees of expense here. So, so we can even configure discounts if required. So item wise discount can also be configured as well as on the entire purchase. If you want a discount percentage or amount, even that can be configured. So as of now, we'll just change to 10,080 here and we'll save this. So this will also generate a separate uh, batch number and 400 stickers will get generated if you want. So once this is done, we've just entered a couple of purchases with two different vendors. We can quickly go to the inventory report and see the stock summary. Uh, when we see the stock summary, it will show you floor, we have Kajaria tiles, 10 boxes, hardware we have uh, 100 pieces, sanitary wear and wall tiles we have 20 boxes. You can always see a detailed stock summary also and when you see detailed stock summary, it will show you the total opening, inward, outward and closing. This can even be filtered for a particular date range. So if you want to see the momentum of this week only. So we can just see total movement that has happened within this week. So total inward of the week, there was no opening. Total inward in this week, total outward is not yet happening and the closing stock available. You can always press enter and jump into the details of the transaction wherein you can find out uh, from where it has come in. And here you can again press enter and see, uh, jump into the transaction details. You even have options for attaching documents. You can quickly copy a purchase voucher to another one or you can just have a quick goods return option available. You can check which user has uh, done the transaction. You can track profits from this particular purchase. All these options are there. But uh, we'll just come back to this after seeing the sales. So once the stock is seen, uh, we even have an option of batch wise stock here, which will show you different lot wise uh, overdue days. So all these are current purchase, so it is showing zero days. Otherwise, you can even have a stock aging uh, done here uh, based on the number of days. And we can define certain discount in bulk for the products which are older than specific days as a clearance sales. So the total stock value is also being shown batch wise. Now coming to the sales part. Uh, in sales uh, we have again we can generate sales order for different clients or we can directly have delivery notes uh, issued or a kind of a sales challenge issued for different customers at different site addresses and based on this uh, sales challenge we can directly convert an order to invoice as well as we can convert sales challenge to invoice and we can always have a track of pending orders or pending challenge uh, from the pending menu here so you can have a track of pending orders and pending challenge we even have an option for dispatch so pending dispatch it can also be tracked we'll see this in this demo now multiple orders or multiple challenge can be converted to a single invoice we even have that provision for now, we'll just start with sales invoice and uh, we're just entering credit sales first for let's just first ceramics. So you can search the customer by a mobile number also, any part of the mobile number. Let's say I just remember partial mobile number, even that can be done. So once you select the customer, uh, his performance graph comes below, his DHC number and email is missing. So this, in, this is an in indication on the screen. You can select a price list if you want. If the customer is not defined with any predefined price list, then you can define the price list while billing. Or else uh, you can just leave this blank. And we can even select the salesperson. So we just selected sales SP1. And then while billing, we can just select Kajaria tiles. So as per the customer requirement, uh, we can dynamically choose what we want. If a customer says, I need uh, tiles for an area of uh, 100 square feet. So you can just select 100 square feet and it, it will automatically uh, define how many boxes are being given or how many pieces are being taken up. So if we find that okay it's 66.64 so we need to just change to 67 pieces. So you can just change to 67 pieces and this will be built to the customer. So once we select 67 pieces the entire stock comes as per the pieces. So here we have this piece automatically coming up. Uh, we as per 10 boxes we have 80 pieces of stock in hand so once we have selected pieces here the stock is being displayed in pieces if we just change here pieces to box we have 10 boxes 120 square feet 11.14 square meters so 
you can just select 67 pieces out of the slot and uh, we can define the selling rate uh, per piece since we have not defined any standard rate we can just have our selling rate here 150 let's say next we just give a jaguar as a door handle let's say another 10 pieces of this so 150 rupees for this too so here per piece rate would be around let's say 30 rupees and this can be 150 per hand door handle So you can just change the rates while billing and if you want discount to be configured here also we can just configure discounts on individual product wise as well as on the entire bill uh, we have certain configurations for this so you can even press shift plus f12 key shift plus f12 uh, which will show you a pop-up with item wise profit in the particular sales voucher this can be even be viewed across quotations or sales order or any other voucher uh, before save or even after saving the voucher you can track the profits uh, item wise in that particular voucher uh, so in this particular voucher it is showing a margin of 35 percent 35.48 percent in the entire voucher plus it is showing you item wise profit made so this way you can uh, determine how much profit you are making on the bill and negotiate better with the client or even quote, send a quote with the best rates uh, possible. You can just quickly save this transaction. Uh, we can directly send the invoice over a WhatsApp to the customer. If you just click yes, a WhatsApp message will be sent. Uh, you just need to connect your WhatsApp web from the system and we even have an option for dispatching now. So once the goods are saved, the system will automatically ask if you want to dispatch all the goods right now. If you give a no year, there will be a track of pending dispatch against this invoice. And if you give yes, you can again partial dispatch the quantity partially also. So out of 10, if you have dispatched uh, all 10 of this, and year out of 70, 60 some pieces, if you dispatch 50, and your tiles if you have just dispatched all this. Total if you have dispatched only one, you can just mention this partial quantity and give save. You even have an option of dispatch all, so if you just click this, all products will get dispatched quickly. And then it's asking if you want to print the invoice, the copies. So you get a print preview generated like this, uh, and you have all the product details with their individual units and pricing. Uh, you can you even have the GST summary at the bottom, wherein uh, it will automatically segregate for different tax percentages and the total comes below. You can have your own terms and conditions defined here in the print format as well as you can have your bank details uh, configured in the printout. So this print format can be customizable as required and you can even directly send a WhatsApp from here or you can even send the invoice format over an SMS with a PDF link as well as you can directly email in Excel or a PDF format or a Word document. You can even export in this many formats here. Let's say we put another sales bill for create a new client saying so we can just create a new client quickly as the square meter also if client says I have a requirement of two square meters and you can have this way so the stock is not sufficient as of now. We will have to reduce the required square meters. Or we have to change it to let's say two boxes. And one box as per the premium price list 250 rupees has come automatically. Customer wise, product wise, fee with supply rate it will automatically come at the bottom and the last supply rate will get auto fetched. If you build this customer at uh, 270 now, you can even do this. So 
this way you can quickly generate your sales bill and there's no whatsapp uh, so there's no mobile number so whatsapp cannot be sent if you want to dispatch goods now you can dispatch all immediately if the client is taking it right away and click yes if you want to print you can even print the invoice with the multiple copies so this way you generate your sales coming back to your stock report now when you see your detailed stock report so it says the opening was 10 boxes and output quantity was somewhere around 9 boxes and closing stock left is this it shows you in multiple units so if you press enter you can just get the details of inward and the output similarly for your hardware and you can see this report and based on your grouping or you can even generate this report based on your uh, category wise or brand wise we just select category wise now it will show you FT we have one product handles we have one product same way you can even check your brand wise uh, stock report when we are seeing this we can even have a track of uh, pending dispatches here so if you just select show undelivered quantity uh, it will even show you products which are physically lying with us but which are yet to be delivered you can always track this pending delivery from the pending stock dispatch report we can see that uh, you can even see a product wise summary here or you can just click show detailed report so out of flow tiles of 6750 has already been dispatched and first product was completely dispatched jaguar handles among other two products, uh, 17 is pending in this and 1 is pending in this. So from here itself, we can again click bulk dispatch or and you can just select all. And you can close the pending dispatches. You can just check your sales report also and uh, on the sales report it shows you total cash sales and the credit sales of the day. You can have summary like uh, product wise sales or brand wise sales. You can just check for a particular date range. The total turnover with quantity can also be seen. You can track your vendor performance, which vendor products you are selling fast, which vendor products you are selling you can just filter it for a particular date range you can even track your profits bill wise wherein you can just select show profits and after this we can just see the accounting part of it wherein you can just directly see the bills receivable and just click show and show you a list of all the bills which are yet to be received the payments yet to be received so in any case in this case if any client we are getting a receipt from any of the clients we can just go to accounts and select the receipt option and if you are receiving cash or we are receiving through NEFT or bank check we can just select the respective account and select the customer name saying let's say Manoj Manoj traders the current outstanding is 4925 if the client just pays 4900 and ask us to settle the 25 rupees as a discount then we can just mention 4900 here and we can mention 25 as a discount and this account will get completely settled let's say a customer paid by a check So when again we go back to bills receivable and click show, the Manoj traders will no more be applicable here. When you see the ledger of Manoj traders, so opening balance was nil as on this date we have a bill for this 4925 and then we have a receipt and then we have a discount against the same. So when you see the pending details, there's no pending bills available here. Similarly, we can go to accounts and uh, go to outstanding and verify our bills payable. So once we go to bills payable, now we have two bills payable, which is one for Jaguar Industries and one for Kajaria Tiles. So we can just go to again accounts and make payments against those. So either we are paying by cash or bank account. We can select the vendor name. Let's say we are paying a payment of 4,000 So it will automatically adjust it bill wise and we can save it. See while the bill wise adjustment, uh, we even have an option here. So while validating whether we are making the payment against this bill, we even have an option of purchase versus sales here. And you can quickly save this. 
Now, upon verifying uh, the bill is payable again, and once we click show here, it will show us that this bill is partially adjusted. So out of 16,000, 12,000 spending, you can just open the plus sign and see the details of the adjustment. Whether it's a purchase return which is being adjusted against the purchase or you have made some payment, all those adjustments will be visible against each of the bill. Now we can even have a cost center linked against each of the transaction also. Like for the sales invoice, uh, we can even have an option saying cost center applicable at the voucher level and we can just give yes. In the receipt and payment, we already have this. So why this will be useful is, uh, now let's say we put in uh, other sales voucher for based on cost center. This is for six ceramics. And we are just selecting the cost center showroom one. So this will bill is being generated against showroom one. That's a Jaguar handle, 10 pieces we have sold. And another set of, uh, let's say, right, right, so five boxes have been sold and we just save this so we've selected showroom one year and uh, under accounts uh, we have a option of cost center analysis so this is showing us that under showroom one we have made a profit of 796 the stock value enters with cost of goods sold. So basically your turnover is 2250 as per this bill. Or the gross turnover. 2250 and the cost value for those goods was 1453.96. So we have a profit of 796. Now similarly when we go to uh, accounts and make any expenses or payment against this cost center we can just select your let's say office expenses now 500 rupees uh, we'll have to link it first with the cost center so we'll just select office expenses first and we just mention as cost center applicable So once you have done this and then you enter this office expenses so it will ask again which cost center are you getting this done so let's say we are spend, spending this against as a rental or the expenses towards showroom one and we can save this again coming back to your cost center analysis this will show me that showroom one total profit is 7296 when we see uh, Entries only, we have a couple of options available here. Entries with cost of goods sold. Once we double click here, it will show you the detail saying opening balance was nil. And this date we had a sales bill of uh, turnover of this much with the landing cost of this. So we have made a profit of 796. Then we had an expense of 500. So total profit made of out of showroom 1 is 296. So this can be for a particular date range or it can be for an entire month month wise you can verify your cost center wise profit and loss so this report by default gives you a summary and you can just drill in and press enter and find out the details similar would be the case for the cost center 2 also if any bill is generated against cost center 2 and expenses made against cost center 2 you can just select those while billing so this way you'll even be able to identify your showroom wise profits too apart from this we have a lot of uh, reporting options uh, in the higher editions wherein you can have your CEO reports with uh, different dashboards and snapshot options. There's and a set of uh, smart AI reports which are kind of a self-designable drag and drop report wherein you can generate any combination of report that you want uh, like uh, customer wise, product wise, sales product wise, customer wise, brand wise, salesperson wise, warehouse wise, showroom wise, cost like cost center wise. Any combination you can just drag and drop and you can just find out. Here in analysis we have special reports like uh, top end reports your vendor performance report you can just track which vendor how much goods you have purchased till date no total return value inward value total margin generated out of uh, vendor the profit generated out of each of the vendor and uh, you can even have vendor wise bill wise so individual bill wise you can find out which vendors how many bills against which bill how much return we have done how much quantity we have sold against the bill the total percentage uh, of value sales ratio from the bill is this bill is 25 percent Similarly for the second vendor we have 
38.96% sold sales ratio and the profits generated against each bill can also be shown here. Third, we even have an option of uh, a product wise profit. So you can even track product wise profit for Jaguar Industries. Individual product wise, how much quantity you have brought in and the product wise profit that you have made. So any combination of detail uh, can be found in vendor performance. This will be a very beautiful report. Other than this, you can directly go to purchase and you can even find out uh, like profit made out of this purchase. So you can just go to options, reference report and just select batch movement. So this report will show you the uh, different batches that are there in this purchase and out of this, uh, how much profit you have made. So it says the markup value, it says the profit you have made from this batch is 1650 which is 15.149% margin. Unsold value of the bill is also being shown and the approx profit that you will generate will also be being shown here. So once you select this particular lot, it shows you the details below which date the purchase have come and when all it has been sold to which all clients. Anywhere you can just press enter and drill into the transaction level details. Similarly would be the case with the first purchase also. So out of first purchase, out of 10 boxes inward we have sold 9.38, closing left is this much. You can select any of the product and get the details at the bottom along with the profits in the batch moment report. So in batch moment report you can even find out vendor wise stock available with us and if you directly go to the batch moment report which is a very special report here, you can just go to options and select vendor wise stock report along with aging also you can have aging option available here. So this will show us the stock each vendor wise. How many days do we have in? So all the stocks is lesser than 30 days only as of now since we have done the purchase in the current date in this demo. So it shows us vendor wise products that we have in hand along with individual batch slot wise. And the closing stock available with us along with the aging. We even have a separate report for stock aging analysis and reorder status level. Stock aging analysis you can quickly find out stock older than 30 days. So we don't have anything as of now. So just give zero days, it will show you the all, all the stocks. So you can have the stock aging report separately generated. So other than this, we have complete accounts management here, right from the final accounts, trial balance, profit and loss. You can generate your GST returns from the Max ERP software. You even have options for bank reconciliation, interest calculation, and end-to-end -end complete accounts can be managed using this. We have a lot of other utilities for bulk SMS, bulk WhatsApp. Uh, we have a very robust uh, user permission and access control in the software. So each screen wise you can define whether which user can edit, delete or we can even have option for limiting the user to uh, provide discounts up to a particular limit. So as per the user role, if it's a billing counter guy, you can give a discount for only 5%. The manager can give up to 10%. Likewise, you can even segregate all these options uh, from the configurations available here. So this was with the basic of the tiles and sanitary demo. I hope you like this video and thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more details.